Hello everybody, it is Regina Pugh from Dallas, Texas. I am back with you guys for another video, another chat, another topic. If it's your first time, welcome. Heaven speaks, let us listen and let us obey. Listen, I'm going to jump right in, okay? Um, today's topic is don't be a prophetic junkie. What do I mean by that, a prophetic junkie? Don't be so thirsty, okay, for prophetic words. We as children of God, as people of God, of course, we want to know what's on the mind of heaven. We want to know what's on the heart of our Father. But don't be a prophetic junkie, okay? Out here running around, chasing prophetic people, chasing prophetic voices, jumping in all these random prophetic lines because you have to be careful and you can get yourself in a lot of trouble, okay? Uh, we live in a very charismatic day and time you know we want to see the signs and the wonders and the mysteries of god uh we want to see the gifts of the holy spirit on display okay and sometimes they can be to a fault uh because while we're not doing the work that we're supposed to do in our personal lives getting our personal relationships um intact with god through prayer through fasting and knowing the word of god ourselves We'd rather sit and listen and witness, um, you know, other people tell us about who our God is, okay? Or we'd rather sit and see, you know, the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, which is amazing. Like, we want to see that, but don't allow that to overshadow you building a foundation in the Lord. We, you know, it's, we all have our favorite preachers and prophet, prophetic voices and things like that, you know, and we run to conferences all the time and we run to prayer lines, but y'all don't be out here being a fool. Okay. You know, people are not always 100. A lot of these people who say they are of the Lord are not of the Lord. Everybody who cries, Lord, Lord, does not belong to Jesus. He did not approve them. He did not set them out. A lot of people are out here raising up themselves. A lot of people are out here, um, you know, doing all kind of stuff, okay? And you in the line, giving away your rent money, giving away your gas money, your utility money. Now, I'm not saying that's not to, uh, not saying that you should not sow, because we should definitely sow, you know, um, and it's even uh, right and biblical when you receive a true prophetic word to sow to that word, to sow seed on the ground of that word. Uh, you know, Lord, I trust you. Thank you for your man serving, your woman serving. Uh, but you have to be wise in this day and time. You have to be wise and, um, you know, you have to know the source by which the prophecy comes from and you also have to know the uh the person you know no do your due, your due diligence and know the background of the person who is releasing the word i have a few notes here so let's go to um back in another video i will link it in the comments how i spoke about the ways that you yourself can hear from god we can hear God. If you have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you, you yourself have access to the Father. You have access to the throne of God yourself. And those top three ways were prayer, the word of God, and worship. Prayer, the word of God, and worship. And then I gave a fourth uh, pointer that you can... Uh, you know, devotional books and handbooks and self-help books, you know, those things can indeed minister to you. And some of those things are so timely, you know, when you read it and you get your hand on a good devotional book and it's like, my God, this is exactly what I needed. This is in the timing of the Lord. So those things can indeed help us hear from heaven ourselves. Okay. And just like with any natural relationship, intimate relationship, uh, not just intimate relationships, but any relationship in order for you to know that individual, guess what? There's a period of time that you have to devote to spending quality time with that individual dinners, movies, walks in the park, uh, telephone conversations. I mean, this is how you get to know people in the natural, right? So it's so much more with our heavenly father. You have to build up that muscle, that muscle in the presence of the Lord, that muscle in prayer to know the, the voice of the Lord. Okay. And to even know the, the difference between your voice and the voice of the Holy Spirit. There's three voices that are always, always speaking to us, ourselves, the voice of the Holy Spirit 
and our adversary, the accuser of the brethren, Satan himself, Lucifer. Okay, you three, there's three that's always working with us, okay, in our ear. And you have to learn to discern the difference between the three. Okay, I have a couple of notes here. So y'all see me looking down. I've, I'm prepared today. I've prepared, you know, something good for you all. So uh, true prophecy, true prophecy oftentimes does not focus on cars, houses, and money and prosperity. That is not the true job of a prophet. That's not the true job of a prophetic voice that is sent of the Lord. Okay, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. Uh, then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Verse 10 says, see today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build and to plant. You see that? That is the commission that the Lord gave Jeremiah. And that commission still rings true for us today. Prophetic people, true prophetic voices. We, I mean, come on. God is bigger. God is so much bigger than houses, money, and cars, okay? We come to challenge systems. We come to uproot things that are not like God. We come to establish order. Establish order in the church of God. Establish order in your personal life. Establish order in your family. Come on now. Come on. God is so much more than just uh, your address is X, Y, and Z, and your bank account has this amount of money. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Our job is so much more weightier, and God is so much bigger, you know, than telling you that in three days you're going to get a $9 million check in the mail. You know, he's able but come on, come on. We have real work to do in the earth realm, real work to do in the realm of the earth. Um, prophetic voices also come to correct. We come to correct and we come to tell you what thus says the Lord. And that can be the difficult part about, um, prophecy, the difficult part about the prophetic mantle. Um, years ago, I would say probably about six, seven or eight years ago, there was a period of time, um, you know, before God has shifted my gift and, you know, I began to see on a different level, uh, the Lord would always show me, you know, my peers and the people, he would show me their secrets and their sin. And he would always give me a word of correction. That's not fun. And it's not popular. Uh, cause first of all, people just be spooked out by you. Okay. Um, because you're, the Lord is allowing you to see, you know, their, their skeletons in their closet. But why does God do that? Because he loves us and he wants to give us a chance to get things right with him. Okay. So that's the not so popular side of prophecy, you know, um, a, a true prophet when you're, when you encounter a true prophet, there's a part of you that should take inventory. You should take inventory of yourselves rather than running, you know, to the line to see what kind of words you could get. That will distinguish between a true prophet and that which of not, which is not because true prophets should cause you to be like, hold on now, you know, do I really want to get up here? You know, they may see something that I don't want them to see. That is if you're not living right. Okay. So, um, you have to also, let's go back to when we're talking about prophets and prophetic people, you have to measure the word that's given to you. Um, every prophetic word that's given to us should point back to the father and it should edify the father. It should edify the body of Christ in some kind of way, edify your life. Um, and it should also be built on the foundation of the word of God. Okay. That easily will help you distinguish between foolery and that which is not. It should always point back to the Father. Always. Always. Okay? And you have to be careful with the vessel that you allow to impart into you. You have to be careful. Because we, we know. We live in a day and time that everybody is proclaiming to be a prophet. I mean, it's like the, the popular thing to do. It's the get rich quick scheme. Come on, y'all. 
Come on. And even me being in this space, you have to do your due diligence and measure me. Do your homework. Does my spirit resonate with the spirit of the Holy Spirit? Okay? Come on. Assess me. I'm telling you. Do your homework. Pray. Lord God, is this woman of God of you? That's what we need to get in the habit of doing and not being so willy-nilly, you know, and so ignorant um, of the, the, the webs that we can get caught up in. Everybody that proclaims to be of God is not of him. And when they come and they want to speak into your life, you can get yourself into a world of trouble, you guys. Uh, you know, there are people that are in all kinds of sins, you know, uh, sex sins and uh, having orgies and, you know, people that come and preach the house down and prophesy to everybody in the house. But then they go back to their room and they commit adultery and their wife and their husband is in another state in another city while they're out in the field, so-called doing evangelistic and missionary work. You know, listen, listen, you have to be careful. You have to be discerning. You got to be sharp in this season. You have to be sharp because the Bible says there are many false prophets that have gone out in my name. That's listen. That's the quickest way to make a paycheck these days to build yourself a social media presence. Okay, call yourself prophet this, prophet that, apostle, whoever. Go and make that money. Uh, put your honorarium, what you request. Go perform for the people. Boom. You done got you about fifteen dollars to $3,000. You know what I mean? And this is not to say that we don't bless the people of God when they're authentically sent from the Lord. But you have to do your due diligence. Do your homework on these people. I want to share an instance where um, the one time this guy prophesied to me. And a few years back, um, just kind of like weird, you know. Uh, I can't really explain. Uh, I would say... What I saw in him was like a copycat spirit, okay? Because I would see him always try to mimic himself after another well-known prophetic voice. And that prophetic voice was sketchy. That man had some issues. You know, that I discerned his spirit. And I was just like, uh, I don't know. I, it's just not, it's not it for me. You know, so the guy that prophesied to me, um, you know, caught, first of all, it was kind of out of order because there was a man that had already spoken to my life, right? Which was the speaker of the house for that night. After the, the speaker of the house prophesied to me, you know, which that man, I believe was truly of God. I know was of God. Um, the other guy called me up and prophesied right after him. And I'm like, that's like kind of out of order. You know what I mean? You don't kind of do things like that. You don't come after the speaker and do whatever you have to do, you know? So that was like red flag number one. And then he started saying things, you know, that were kind of like semi-true, um, you know, like God is going to bless your finances. Uh, you know, I see your husband and something with his trucking and things like that because my husband, CDL driver, you know, but this man, uh, was operating out of a familiar spirit, okay? And I wasn't as mature in the Lord as I am now, so I didn't know where to, to place these things and what to call them and where to put them, you know? Um, but after that prophetic word was released over my life, y'all, things got worse. Things got worse in my life. He's speaking about all these financial blessings and things like that, and I will never forget that. I'll never forget that word because... I just felt like the manner in which he was prophesying from, the source in which he was prophesying from was not of God. And people can do damage. People can do damage and you stand up there, yes, Lord, amen, amen, I agree. You have to watch what you say. Somebody call you up for a prophetic word, listen to what they're saying. Listen to what it is they're saying. Don't be up there full of emotion and crying. We get so overwhelmed by emotion and we crying that we're not listening to what they're saying. They could be speaking word curses over you. And because you're so caught up in your emotion, um, you know, everything's going over your head. 
okay but you have to be careful because people are out here operating in divination operating in divination and calling themselves prophetic voices um you know operating out of a prophesying out of familiar spirits uh when you prophesy out of familiar spirit that means that you have some sort of foundational knowledge you know and this man knew that my husband drove trucks you know so you up here just making up stuff you know but i'm telling you i'll never forget that season because i remembered that word that was released but then everything around me is like going to hades you know everything is falling apart so you have to be careful who you allow to speak in your life what is this person's life like? Um, I I have come to the, the point in my life now when it comes to prophetic words that if somebody calls me up, if I'm in a service and I don't know you, and especially if I see like a bunch of foolishness going on or I sense that you're full of flesh, you call my name, I will politely decline. Oh, no, thank you. God bless you. God bless you, though. No, thank you. I'm okay. God, go to the next person. Okay, I, we, I don't have time for that. I do not have time for the warfare that comes with that. You know, people speaking into your lives and their lives are jacked up. You don't know what the heck they're releasing. You don't know what they're dabbling in. You guys, proceed with caution. Proceed with caution. I'm looking at my notes, making sure that I have not missed everything. Um, okay, so I'm going to end with this. The Word of God tells us that we need to try the Spirit by the Spirit, okay? That's very, very important. Try the Spirit by the Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Ask God to sharpen your discernment. Ask Him to give you discernment of spirits so that you know what kind of spirit you're dealing with, okay? Very important. And this is in John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1. I want to read that. It says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe who these people say they are. You do your homework on them. You know, go through their social media pages. Uh, check them out. People that you are sitting up under. People that you are listening to. Even in social media. I thank God for every one of you. But do your homework on me. Go to my Facebook page. Go to my Instagram. Come on. You got to know you have to know what you're sitting up under. And you have to know what you are allowing your spirit to soak in. Our spirits are always open. Always open. And you have to be careful what you allow your spirit man to take in. Okay, but it says test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out in the world. I'm going to jump down to verse 6. You can read that in your, your spare time. Read 1 John 1. Um, I'm going to jump down to verse 6 where it says, We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth. Come on. And the spirit of falsehood. We recognize it by the spirit of the living God that dwells on the inside of us. You can feel it. The Holy Spirit will caution you. Sometimes we step over that caution. Sometimes we ignore it. But I know all of us who are spirit-filled can go back to times in your life when you said, I, I just felt it. Something was off with that person. I knew it. Something was off with them. So you have to learn to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And learn to, if, if you feel like you need that area in your life heightened, ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, give me a renewed sensitivity to the things that are of you and those things that are not of you. Okay? So, we're not going to be out here being prophetic junkies. Okay? Don't jump in every prayer line. Don't move in um, ignorance and, and not being wise. You know, uh, giving your money away to people. That's, I mean, listen, they done racked up a couple of grand in one ministry trip. And then you trying to figure out how you going to make it. Even be wise in your giving. That God doesn't want that for you. Yes, there are times when we sacrifice, but he don't want you sitting in the dark. Because you've given your last to some prophetic person. Or, you know, somebody that proclaims to be a prophetic voice. You guys, be careful. Um, I, a couple of years back, 
I, um, you know, we prophesy in part and we understand in part. God will reveal things when he's ready to. Okay, God may give you a little sprinkle of something. And I'm talking to my prophetic people. Uh, he may let you know, you know, by dream or vision, just a tidbit of something. You know, but then you have to wait for the full manifestation of their revelation. Or you have to wait for him to give you the rest. I learned that the hard way in a season, um, maybe about five years ago, where I was so thirsty to know what it was that God was saying, because he, I kept having this recurring dream and I didn't understand it. So what did I do? I went to social media to try to figure out and understand what I was, what I was uh, seeing, what I was constantly dreaming about. But you got to be careful because we don't know these people. We don't know these people. And what did I do? What did I do in my ignorance and immaturity? I went to uh, a man that seemed to be talking good. He's from um, Africa, you know, the motherland. Listen, y'all, they even, their, their warfare is different from the warfare in the United States. Okay? Different set of demons, different different set of devils, different set of regional spirits that are assigned there. Um, so here I go, you know, listening to something, some, this man that I believe it was explaining the dreams that I had and being a prophetic seer, y'all, you guys, it really jacked me up and I had to learn the hard way. Prior to, the Lord warned me and I had a dream. Um, and there was a man in my dream and he told me to stop listening to, uh, stop listening to so much, like, so, excuse me, so many videos and people on social media, but I was so hungry and thirsty. That's when I first, you know, began to be like, Lord, I want to know more about this gift that you've given me. I want to be responsible with it. I was zealous and I'm like, yes, I'm going to learn. And I thought that, you know, that dream was of the enemy. I misinterpreted what it was the Lord was telling me. And I was like, oh, that's the devil. He don't want me to be great. He don't want me to rise to my potential. So the blood of Jesus against you, devil, I'm going to be out here and I'm going to learn all that God has for me. The Lord warned me. But because I wasn't sensitive enough to the spirit of God, me searching out this dream, landing on this uh, African minister, prophetic person, that, which I thought... Or I don't know, he could really be, but the, that's the that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know this man from a can of paint. So that encounter, me opening myself up, our spirits are always open. And when you carry the prophetic mantle, you have to be very careful. And when you're a prophetic seer, you got to be even more careful. So what did that do to me? That sent me into a season of uh, being tormented for about six months. I'll never forget that for about six months. My nights were running into days. Every time I closed my eyes, the devil was coming after me. I was hearing demonic spirits in my ear and it all came from me opening my spirit up to a source I knew not of. You have to be careful. Six months felt like a year. It probably was a year on and off. The Lord warned me. Warning comes before destruction. Isn't that the word of God? He warned me, but in my ignorance and my overzealousness, I did not heed the warning of the Lord. And I allowed myself to be sent into a season of being tormented by demons that I, I didn't even know how to war against. Okay? This man way over in Africa somewhere. Okay, they're assigned different demons and devils than what we have over here. Didn't even have the tools to fight. I was going up, you know, to pastor, my pastor, and please pray for me. Like, I can't even sleep at night. Every time I close my eyes, I'm seeing demons. Every time I, I, you know, close my eyes, the devil's whispering in my ear and, you know, craziness. I'll never forget hearing one demon say, we don't. We don't know you. We don't know of you. Y'all, that was them doggone African demons. Whatever you want to call them. But they ain't over here on this soil. So be careful. Be careful. 
Okay? I couldn't believe it. We don't know of you. Be careful. So, I'm going to stop there. And I want you guys, I hope that you're encouraged. I hope that this gives you some kind of foundational wisdom and knowledge. Seek God first. Let that be your first source for whatever it is that you need in life. Whatever you're looking for. Whatever answers you need. Let it be from the word of God, from the mouth of God. And when you do receive a prophetic word for somebody, from somebody, you measure that word, you test that word. I was even taught by uh, one of my mentors, the prophetic class that I went through, that you don't even say amen right off the flip when you're receiving a prophetic word because amen means I agree. I agree with what you're saying. You listen and you measure that word. Sit quietly, listen to them. You know, some of them want you to fall out loud and be all emotional. No, nope. I'm listening to what it is you're saying. And I'm trying to make sure you ain't coming sideways in the spirit, okay? So until next time, you guys, have a blessed day. I love you. Leave me a comment. Let me know if this blessed you. Um, I hope it did. I'd have blessed myself. Listen, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.